History does not repeat itself, but it does rhyme. Mark Twain We now have the opportunity to give the USSR its own Vietnam War, wrote Zbigniew Brzezinski to US President Jimmy Carter on the eve of 24th of December 1979. That was the date when the Soviet troops finally decided to intervene in Afghanistan. Which was something that the United States itself would do after 21 years. Today let's talk about how history repeats itself. And in geopolitics, you never know that the games that you once played would not be played against you as well. You know, back in the days of Jimmy Carter, it was called the Afghan Trap, but of course for USSR and not for what it is known now for the United States. From Obama to Trump and then to Biden, everyone believed that it was actually an unending war, with the US and NATO forces exiting Afghanistan on this date last year. Usually people have not been able to talk about how many similarities have been there between the US pullout from Afghanistan and the Russian one. It is easy to think about history in a linear mode where one event leads to another like a rolling film which leads to a catastrophe. But at least in the case of Afghanistan, that is how it turned out to be. But you see, the thing is that Afghanistan has remained such a mystery for everyone where all the wars fought over there have been against a perceived and not a real threat. Sometimes the threat would be terrorism, sometimes communism, sometimes capitalism. But all of those threats turned out to be farce and the real reasons were something else. Let's first take the example of USSR. She was way too consistent in backing up her sympathetic government in Kabul. The reason was to have geostrategic leverage over India, Pakistan and Iran. As you would know that in politics it is much more easier to fight a real threat rather than with your own fears and the USSR entered Afghanistan not only to tap into the rich energy resources of Central Asia but also to get access to the warm waters of Arabian Sea. This is something that has not been achieved before in history even before the advent of Islam, Christianity, capitalism or socialism, you name it, Alexander the Great tried to do that and failed miserably. In the case of USA, it was curbing the influence of China and Russia, not only in Central Asia, but also in Southern Asia. Of course, buying weapons from Zionist companies and plundering Afghanistan's resources at the same time. Would you agree or not? Do you know that in 327 BC, Alexander the Great marched through the Koner Valley while taking his supplies through Khyber and on his journey he was attacked by an Afghan archer's arrow and was fatally wounded, afterwards which he was barely able to make it to the Indus River. It is important to understand the death of Alexander because it was the first instance where Afghanistan knocked down an undefeated and a ruler that was called the Great. But it was not the last. Afghanistan went down in history to become the graveyard of empires. Where in 19th century, out of the 16,500 British soldiers who retreated from Kabul to the garrison state of Jalalabad, only one soldier survived. So another interesting point that we want to share with you is about Louis Dupree, who is a scholar and a historian of Afghanistan culture who has written 18 books like Afghanistan, the coffers of the Hindu Kush and the modernization of Inner Asia. He argues that there are four points which are the prime factors of the fall of empires in Afghanistan. Number one, the invasion and occupation of a foreign force. Number two, the placement of an unpopular Amir or government like in the case of United States, or governors or presidents. Number three, the harsh acts of the invading army. 
and number four, the reduction of subsidies to the local tribes. Again, in case of America, failure to compensate for the destruction caused by general warfare and drones. Now come forward to recent history where USSR supported Daud Khan the coup against King Zahir Shah. And afterwards in 1979 assassinated Prime Minister Hafizul Amin. You know what followed, right? The Cold War era. Where the United States supported local Mujahideens to fight against the USSR and they tried to keep their government in Kabul. And now that we think about it, why did the Afghans fight against the Soviets and not against King Zahir Shah where he too was trying to propagate modernization and communism? The main reason is something that is built in the Afghan society, which is fighting against foreign occupying forces. That is the same thing that happened to the US, the British and Alexander the Great. It is the same spirit that was galvanized by the US against USSR, which eventually played out against them. In the mountain valleys, the quantitative or even the qualitative military might does not play out as it does in other places. Now take this as an example that in 2015, a survey was conducted of 1657 police officers in 11 provinces where only 11% reported that they had actually joined the force to fight the Taliban. The others just joined it to earn salaries. Now you can imagine the result of such demotivation that in Kunduz, only 500 Taliban fighters made 3,000 Afghan soldiers flee and they were able to capture the area very easily. At the end of 2019, the Washington Post published a series titled The Afghanistan Papers, which includes notes and interviews of US officials assigned to the Afghan desk or into the field in Afghanistan they all concluded that they had long seen the war as unwinnable. The second similarity where the occupying forces placed a demagogue ruler was exemplified by the USSR placing Noor Muhammad Taraki from the PDPA, People's Democratic Party of Afghanistan. They tried to do land reforms, they tried to modernize the society by following state atheism and banning many cultural aspects of the Afghan society. The similarity can be easily seen with what the US did with Hamid Karzai, Ashraf Ghani, Abdullah Abdullah and so on. You get the point, right? The remodeling of Afghan society was never achieved, where outside Kabul, most of the provinces remained undeveloped and impoverished. One point to ponder over here is this, that even when both US and USSR invested so much money in the Afghan society. Why could they not succeed with this model? The reason is that even though there was very less intervention in local politics, the rulers were mostly corrupt and did not treat the local people well. Whether it was Noor Muhammad Taraki, Hafizul Amin or Babur Kamal by USSR and the ones placed by the US. Not only did they steal land, and give government jobs as patronage to their own family members, what they used to do sometimes is that they tricked the foreign forces into attacking their political rivals, the tribes of whom then eventually joined the Taliban to fight not only the government but also the occupying forces. Refer to the 2005 story where Karzai-backed warlords disarmed Reis Bagrani, a respected leader of Alizai tribe and then what they did was they stole their land as well. Now is there something to be done? What do you think it will result in? Common sense? Just think about the return on investment. At the height of the US involvement in Afghanistan, they spent $110 billion a year on things such as infrastructure development, women empowerment, and agriculture and literacy. Now let's discuss this point, that initially when USSR entered Afghanistan, they did have an option to retreat but they did not want to do so because it would have weakened their position on the international stage where the other European nations would have also wanted to secede from the USSR. But eventually, as history played out and they did retreat, it was too late for the USSR. 
again to the main theme of our video where history repeats itself. This is exactly what happened to the US. According to Carter Malkasian, formal special assistant of strategy to the US chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff, the best point to move out of Afghanistan was between 2001 and 2005, when not only the Afghan government was popular, the Taliban were disorganized and there was very little resistance to the occupying forces. The major mistake was that decision of Bush administration to stay in Afghanistan. In fact, in December 2001, senior Taliban leaders even decided to broker a peace deal with America where they would recognize Hamid Karzai as the legitimate leader of the country. But Donald Rumsfeld refused the deal. This pushed the Taliban back to war and the rest was history. victory of a reactionary idea is always a defeat for humanity.